Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem valid palindrome 2. We're given a string s and we want to return if it can be a palindrome if we delete at most one character. That doesn't mean we have to delete a character, but we can delete at most one character. So if you're familiar with palindromes, you should immediately be able to come up with a non-optimal solution for this problem, which is basically that given a string such as ABA, we know, you know, to check that it's a palindrome is pretty easy. We just use a two-pointer technique, start at the ends, you know, compare the two characters, they're equal, then we shift each of the point, uh, pointers inward, and then continue that until we have no more characters left to check, or if maybe the pointers meet each other. So if both of the pointers in this case land at the middle character B, we know that it is a palindrome because of course they're pointing at the exact same character now. But it might not be a palindrome, but we're still allowed to delete one character. So if the, if it turns out that the entire string is not a palindrome, well, the brute force would be to just you know remove this character and check, is this a palindrome? Maybe it's not. Then remove this character and then check, is the remainder a palindrome, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if we do that, we'll have to potentially remove every single character and then go through the entire list each time. So that would be a big O of n squared time complexity solution, where n is the size of the input string. But it turns out that there is a better way. Suppose we had a string like this, and then we start with the exact same two-pointer technique. Immediately we'd see that these two characters are not the same. But we also remember that we're allowed to remove one of the characters. Well, in this case, we know for sure that if it's possible to turn this string into a palindrome, we have to remove either this character or remove this character. Because remember, the two ends of the string have to be equal, but in this case, they're not. So something has to change here, right? One of these characters has to change. The problem is we don't know which character has to change though. So technically, we have to try both ways. We can first consider, let's say possibly this character can be removed, and then maybe is the rest of it a palindrome. When we do have the rest of the characters, we don't have to do anything fancy at this point because we already used up our removal. So all we have to check is, is this remaining string a palindrome? We know the algorithm to do that is very simple. And in terms of code, we can actually just take this uh, string and then reverse it and turn it into ZZA and then check, is this equal to the original? Well, it's not. So that didn't work. So now we only have one option left. We have to check, can we remove this? And then is the remainder of the string a palindrome? Well, take the reversal of this. It is AAA. And yes, that's equal to the original string. So this way did work. We did find a palindrome. So then we can return true. But if it didn't work, suppose you know this was an X or something, then this wouldn't be a palindrome either. And then we would have to return false. And it might not always be necessary that the two end characters are the ones that are unequal. It could be something like this, right? Initially, we would say, okay, these two characters are equal, right? So we don't have to look at them anymore. We can shift our pointers to the next characters, and then we can look at the subproblem. Is this a palindrome? We're never going to have to look at these two characters ever again. So that's pretty much the idea. Now, if you noticed, in this case, the time complexity, since when we are deleting a character, we, we only really have two choices of which character we're going to remove in the worst case. We're not going to have to consider removing every character. So we're going to have two choices. So in that case, we would potentially you know, have to iterate through the entire string two times. So the time complexity is going to be two times n, which we know can be simplified to just be big O of n. Okay, so now let's code it up. And just like the drawing, we're going to first initialize our two pointers to be at the end, or well, the left pointer is going to be at the beginning, the right pointer is going to be at the end of the string, so the length minus one. We're going to continue the algorithm until the two pointers have met each other, because if they do end up meeting each other, then we know that we pretty much did find a palindrome. So on the outside, we can return true. But it's also possible that they might not be a palindrome. That would be the case if the left and right characters are not equal equal to each other. But hold on a second, because we are allowed to delete at least one character. So just because they're not equal doesn't mean it's not necessarily a palindrome. 
So there are two cases here. Remember, we can skip or delete the left character, or we can skip or delete the right character. If we delete the left character, we'll have a substring that looks like this. We'll basically uh, take a substring, L plus one, so we're skipping the left character and then going up until the end of the string. Now, in Python, if I just put an R here, it's not actually gonna include this character. So to include that character, we have to put an R plus one. I know it might be a little bit confusing, but that's just how it is in Python. So this is the string where we are skipping the left character. To skip the right character, we're gonna do something similar. We're going to start at the left character, uh, but we're gonna go up until the right character. Now, again, this is non-inclusive, so this is not gonna include the right character. It's gonna stop at R minus one. So it might be a little bit hard to read if you're not familiar with Python, but you can, of course, change this to whatever language that you're doing. And the way I showed it in the drawing is that we can take skip L, we can take this string and then reverse it and then see if it is equal to its own reversal. Now in Python to reverse a string, we can just go like this, but we know that it, if this is not equal, then we also have to check is the right, uh, if we skip the right character, then is it a palindrome? Uh, we can check that by taking the right string and then comparing it to the reversal of the right string, which again, we can just get like this. So if either of these conditions is true, then we can return true. But if neither of them are true, then this will of course end up returning false. So that's the main idea here. And the last thing we don't want to forget to do is, of course, update our pointers. It could have been that this, uh, if this condition evaluates to true, then for sure inside of this if statement, we're going to be returning. But if this doesn't evaluate, that means the two characters were equal. And when they are equal, we just want to update our pointers. We want to increment the left pointer and decrement the right pointer. So that's pretty much the entire code. Let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's very efficient. One little thing about this solution, though, you can see that we're kind of building two subarrays. So that does actually take extra space. So this is going to be big O of N extra space. Now, of course, we don't have to do it this way. We could have created a helper function that was pretty much just a two pointer uh, uh, algorithm where we would just check from this index to this index, is this string a palindrome? And we would have done the same for uh, this string as well. We could have done that without extra memory just by using some pointer manipulation. And that's perfectly valid and it actually does save space. So if you want to write it that way, you definitely can. That would probably be a little bit preferred in an interview. I just think it's trivial enough that if you're watching this, you can probably figure out how to do that portion yourself. And this is just a little bit more readable. But I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.